Thank you. And how are you? How's your day? Uh, thank you so much. I am good. Uh, today it's a very quiet day, as for me. Very because quiet. I am huh? now at home. Yeah. Oh, okay. No flying today? Uh, I have one today, but it's just for training. Okay. Um, so, firstly, uh, Yellowtail29, as you're known. Uh, on Instagram, on online. I just want to thank you so much uh, for coming and joining me on here. Uh, I, I do really appreciate your time. Um, and it, it's it's an incredible thing to have. So firstly, thank you and um, and welcome. Thank you too for joining. I am very appreciated. I will, I want to, I saw your YouTube channel when you was in Kharkiv. I were impressed and I, it was my decision to give you the conversation and give you the, this interview. Thank you so much, Sam. Oh, no, I appreciate it um, so much. So firstly, I just want to go back to how you got into flying and how you got specifically into then flying fighter jets. So where did, where did this all start? Uh, it was uh, uh, when I was a child. I saw the airplanes like uh, all the pilots. It's like a same story about the, all the pilots. You see the airplanes, you want it, and after that you understand how do you can do this. And um, on my flat uh, near the um, airway of the civil aviation, I saw it, uh, and in the Kharkiv region, I saw the after the 11 class, I saw the Kharkiv University of Air Kajadup, Air Force. I called them and said, how much cost it? They said it's free for because it's from military. I said, okay, and I have a lot of checks between medical checks in my town, after that on the university, psychological test, physical check. And I am entering to the Kharkiv Air Force University, which takes name Ivan Kajadu. And I'm studied then for years, like a cadet. Yes. And then I guess you graduate and you're flying MiG-29s. Yeah, yeah. I go to the one of the brigades in the Ukraine. And uh, it was in the Kiev region. Um, and fly from from first year during the five years. That's incredible. And how has your job changed from before the war to now in the war? And how's the flying changed? Okay. <clears throat> uh, first of all, when I was uh, a military, I served only five years. After that, I'm retired. And I had my civil pilot license. I to, to teach the people to fly in little uh, aircrafts, like a PPL and CPL course. And when it started in front of force, I took my family, go to the uh, west of the Ukraine, to the, be the, in a safe place. And after that, I took my, all the, my documents, I go to the brigade. Maybe from the March, I started to fly. How it's changed? Uh, all the uh, lives of Ukraine war has changed. It's uh, when you fly only from train, you know you will just um, survive. You know, only technical reasons or some like you know, environment reasons like a bird strike can uh, damage your aircraft. But today, you know you have the 
missile attack, you have Shahid attack, you, you have the opposite side pilots who has modern aircraft than we have. Uh, the game is changing. Yes. And how often are you flying against Russian pilots in aircraft in like a <clears throat> dogfight scenario? Uh, okay. Now, how often? I flew more than 60 flights during these uh, eight months. Uh, but uh, we have only one on this history war, only one dogfight. You saw it in the internet oh. when the MiG-29 uh, shot down the Sukhoi, uh, Russian aircraft. Another thing, we have only a long-range fighter fight now. Only this one. We don't have the meet each other less than 50 or 40 kilometers between us. Because uh, now the game I'm said once it's changing they flew much clever we flew much clever they they are as uh, aviation they are very good and strong opponent yes because he so in your experience, they they have I'm sorry. The, their experience and they have a modern the aircraft if we have the same uh, aircrafts I, I definitely, truly uh, understood the the war will be ended of this day. Or we yes. have much more modern aircraft. We every time on the political, on the mass media, on the internet, uh, we saw we ask it for the new aircraft like a F sixteen. Yes. And what would that enable you to do? What, how different, as of someone who's not a pilot, and especially not a fighter pilot, how different is a MiG-29 to something like an F-16? It's a big difference. You know, the modern F-16, yes. it's the modern F-16 about the equipment, about the avionic, about the communication, about the sign, about the missiles, it's very big difference between. If we compare the cars, you know, for the flight, MiG-29 is very good, the structural. The speeds, for example, F-16 and MiG-29, the same. We flew 800 kilometers, 1,000 kilometers, the F-16, the same. We can flew 100, 1,500 kilometers per hour, the F-16 has the same. But the uh, technical ranges for shoot the missile, the F-16 has maybe multiplied two and half from this region. Okay. The, it's much better. It's like compare the cars like an old Audi and new Audi. Like this, I don't know. Yes. Yes. And... Is an F-16 better than anything the Russians have yes, uh, of course. at their disposal? The Nash, yeah, of course, I'm sorry. The Russian propaganda state, they have the, this uh, type of characteristic. But we saw in the, this war, they, have, they haven't. For example, they have, for example, they can have said they have 100 kilometers, divide to two. 50 maximum, maximum. I don't say about the rockets or uh, any car. It's just example. They they lie for technical reason. They or they lie. This is just propaganda. Yes, and the, the Russians don't have any of their self capability in like the Su 57s. Uh, it doesn't matter. So, Su 57 like uh, you know. Manual, maneuverable one airplane, but we don't need the, this maneuver. We don't have the dogfight. If we close each other to dogfight, yes, it's a very important thing. But we have only long range fighters. Who has yes. more good weapon to shoot? It will, who will win? That's it. 
You don't need the dog fights when you come to the back and another things. Uh, this is not that again. This is not World War Two or another things. This is only technical, technical war. Who has more modern equipment? That will be win. That's it. You can imagine you have yeah. the only uh, automatical weapon, and you have only like a simple weapon. Yeah, automatical weapon will be win. That's it. Yes. And can you explain to us what it's like flying a fighter jet in a combat scenario? Like at the moment when you step off from that base on a, on a mission, can you sort of explain what that's like? Okay. First, first flight, I will display the first flight because it's uh, much important because you have uh, like a nervous fear before the flight. You cannot uh, understand what will expect you all think. You don't want to die. But when you sit on the airplane, the cockpit is uh, closed and you starting up your engine, the fear is gone. And you know what you have in your scale. Because the, our Ukrainian life, because if you cannot catch the missile or rocket, which has flown from Russian territory to us more than 2,000 kilometers from Tupolev aircraft, and you can cut, cut it, you, you understand this missile will drop on the buildings, on the road, on the electricity system, and you understand how much um, important your task, because you are safe the our ukrainians life from the children to the older men or women yes and those but, missions, uh, are they primarily shooting down rockets yeah hmm. for example i am shot down one and, rocket yeah. and one shahid yes and what's going through your head as you take off the runway and, you know, go wheels up? Are you yes. staying low from the radar signatures? Are you worried about, like, S-400 rocket systems? Uh, when we... Say, say one more time, please. The last part of time, please. Um, so what's going through your head when you take off from the runway, like, wheels up? What what are you thinking about? Are you Are you thinking about, you know, staying beneath the radar and away from like the s400 rocket systems or how does that look yeah yeah first of all we prepared it we know all the system where is it uh, correctly places the russian system like a, a c300 or c400 or another things anti airplane uh, rockets and uh, we carefully prepared for our task if we see the task is will be done we do this if we see the task very extremely to uh, cannot be made it or successful we don't do this because we understand this is long range war after the takeoff you don't have any anything about your about the nervous and all the other things you sh you only make like a robot and step by step to make your task that's it yes have you had any close calls have you had like missiles i guess after you and like any close calls while up there <clears throat> okay uh, what i had i had uh, I not count, but I had uh, few uh, rockets which uh, has uh, flown on my back because the when we support another our ground aircrafts like a uh, ground attack aircraft Sukhoi 25, the Russian stayed above and shoot their rocket 77 
R77 to to our side. But we, but our dispatcher, our navigator said we have the rocket shoot and we go to the back and they don't shoot us. But I can, couldn't say they they haven't the success shooting, but they have from 100 missiles when they have only maybe three or five percentage of success. Yes. It, it wasn't... And um, have you had any of your friends who have been shot down? Yeah, I have one. I have one. Um, That's... It, it said, yeah. When you sit uh, in the morning, yeah, you it's... prepare it. And uh, after that one hour, he, he was shot down. And day after day, you only took his clothes and mail to his parents. And you understand his life is ended. You have uh, very pressure on you. And... Uh, you understand what what happened can you with you because the death much closer for pilots i couldn't say the pilots more difficult uh, professional like uh, now um, troops or soldiers but it's it's uh, difficult to... yes And what do people need to do to continue supporting pilots like yourself? Is there anything you, you need? First of all, we need the new airplanes. I know this is like a political question, but without the voice, without the, all the people, political nothing, you know? We need to close the sky under the Ukraine because the, it's much important. It's not war between pilot to pilot, you know? Let's make, like, let's make the only dog fight between us. That's it. But they destroyed our, our buildings. You know what they do with Kharkiv, what they do with Mariupol, what they do with Kyiv, the, all the Ukraine. The first day they shoot all the airports around the Ukraine, all the airport, Borisko airport, civil international airport, Kharkiv airport, Chuguiv destroyed one, a lot of destroyed airplane. Uh, and uh, what we need, the new weapon, to not be tired to support Ukraine, because it's very important for now. I know, I understand, uh, if you have the news every day about the Ukraine, you can have the tired, but it's not like a simple news this is war if we lose they will come to the europe 100 percent yes what do you think the media gets wrong about ukraine a same one more time please what what is it that you think the media like the mainstream media gets wrong about Ukraine? Uh, Ukrainian media or Russian media? Or all the media? Um, well, um, all the media. Like, what are some common misconceptions? Misconception? No, you know, from Russian side, this is propaganda 100%. They can cover it up to down every information. Um, from Ukrainian media, I would say sometimes, uh, as for me, um, the the like a good shooting or good results much higher, a little bit, but higher. But we, they shouldn't say like this because uh, we should uh, like uh, understood the clear information. Yes. No, I understand. And where do you see your job being a fighter pilot 
changing in the next few months as winter comes in. Do these planes, are these planes able to fly in severely bad cold weather? Uh, the weather will always change the, the strategy and always change the regularity and from the pilot, uh, from the flights. Because the, if we don't have the weather, we will didn't fly. The Russians the same. If they have the, the some thunderstorm, they didn't fly. The sky is clear. But in the winter... And have you had... Yeah. Sorry, Tell Yuka. Me. No, no, no. But in the winter, we have oh, no, the you... pretty normal, nor normal, normal uh, weather for the flying. Much better than the, on the summer because the air much cooler and this is much uh, uh, pretty good for the airplane. Yes. Have you spoken to over radio or face to face with any Russian pilots? No, no, never. I I saw the radio common. I hear on the internet the radio communication between the Russian and how they wish pleasure to push the button to um, rocket has target and and other things, but. Like a face to face, I I don't uh, speak them. I have the few cadets who, when I graduated, they go to the when the Crimea was occupied from Russia, they saw it in the Bilbeck, and they still uh, continue to serve to the Russian army, but we not connect with them. Yes. And what would it take to close the airspace over Ukraine? One more time, please, really. Um, the popular saying of close the air or the airspace over Ukraine, what would it actually take to be able to do that? Uh, what we need to close to the space in the Ukraine. Yeah, to to stop the Russian like jets coming and the Russian missiles. Ah, okay, this is simple. Is the, we need Ukraine the... able to do that? Yeah. yeah, we can do it. The modern uh, hmm. anti-air system, that's it. And the new airplane, like F-16, it can, it, it can make the ground attack and the air air attack. I think from the Ukraine, maybe I am wrong. Maybe 20 F-16 for, from five each uh, south, east, west and uh, and anti, um, cover all the like a shield under the Ukraine. It's uh, it's a very difficult uh, task, but cover the the main like uh, the main ways, the main direction from the Russian camp. This is important one. I think we need. I couldn't say how how much we need it, but uh, for us, uh, the anti anti system for anti air system and uh, and aircrafts will be very good for us. And it will be changed all the game. Without supporting the air, the ground forces cannot move without support of the air. If we want the air, the, we will want the everything. Yes. I um I was one of your MiG 29s and it, it may have been you um scared me very much I was in uh, Kramatorsk at one point and a Ukrainian MiG 29 came over the top of me incredibly low um 
and you better than anyone know how loud those aircraft are. <laughs> and uh, it, it gave me the fright of my life, but I was, I was very glad to see that it was a Ukrainian one. Can you give us any insight on the, the very popular tale about the ghost of Kiev? Uh -huh. ah, okay. This is not only one person. You, you, we can say about uh, maybe, uh, I will not tell his name. He flew more than other pilots, but this is like uh, all pilots who fly on the Kiev or Zhitomir state. This is like a com all the, this is, um, um, Ghost of Kiev is just uh, not one person. It's all the pilot from the Kiev and Zhitomir uh, region. Or, uh, or others uh, place who, who fly under the Kiev. That's it. This is not was the one person. This was the two brigade. Okay. Okay. And is there any other events that have taken part in your, in your flying that stand out to you or any stories? Uh, any stories? Uh, incredible aviation story you have uh, heard is about the helicopters, which took the person of the Azov. You heard this or no? Uh, maybe, but can you say it again? Maybe. Yeah. Okay. I will. The helicopters from Ukraine go to the Azov Stow in the center of the Stow and took all the, no, not a lot, all the, the, the people, a lot of people to rescue. We have this story about the man who has the wife on the Azov style and he is helicopters. And he go with the helicopters and save the, his wife from that. And they go on the night with uh, night goggles. The rockets uh, shoot them, uh, the one of the engines. It was a uh, very impressed uh, story. And this truth story about the helicopters in the Ukraine. How they are uh, pass the, all the how they pass all the troops, how they pass all the anti air system. It's uh, like a like a movie. Uh, and they rescue a lot of uh, and... humans uh, on the, from the Azovstal. Mm. It's incredible. And how is the Ukrainian Air Force holding up? Pretty well, you know. Uh, we, maybe we lose the first round, yeah, from the 24th of February, but we win win another round, another months, because uh, the technical, the, with normal, um, like, uh, it's normal, but it's not pretty good. It's not to have a lot of damage or some technical problems with our planes. We have, we have a lot of tasks and, and we do this. I can talk about the air forces. We uh, pretty much good on this uh, on this war, but uh, it, it's not enough. Uh, we can protect, but we can shoot a lot of. Uh, the I say one more time, we need the, another airplanes to win this game. How much faster they, they came, they will, the war will be ended. We will close the sky, the troops cannot go, we will destroy all the troops on the ground, that's it. 
we only need the new airplanes and new anti-air anti -air system. That's it. My hmm. prediction, if we have such Do one F-16... Yeah. Two months and... Sorry, uh, continue with your prediction. War, yeah. I only my opinion, if we have F-16, the modern one, and we have the anti-anti-air systems, the maybe two or three months, the the war will be end. Do you believe that you will survive this war if those F-16s don't arrive? If they don't arrive? Yes. Um, I think yes. Because uh, I I make the, the reason because I, I know this. The Russian propaganda, they said they have a lot of weapons, yeah? Tell me one question, the answer for one question. If they have the, a lot of missiles on, and other things, they will buy the Iran drones? Definitely no. Hmm. Yes. Well, Yellowtail29, is there anything else uh, you'd like to share with myself and my viewers? Um, thank, first of all, thank you so much for supporting Ukraine. Uh, the, every voice, every dollar, or every things, or every tweet to support in Ukraine is very important. Because without the supporting, without the helping, without the tendency of this war to help in Ukraine, we we will win, but it will be way harder for us. But now, the, all the world, the support Ukraine. Thank you, you. Thank you, all the views. And uh, thank you one more time. Just and and myself thank you so much i really appreciate your time and honestly um you're you're a hero of mine uh, I, I wouldn't have the ability or the nerve to be able to do what you do at such a high um at a high rate so um, you're a hero of mine um dark you and thank you very much okay i will talk about the russian pilots uh, if we took the simple uh, soldiers, which have which have the story about the the military took them about the Russian side, took them put on the bus, and after the ten or um, one day they came to the Ukraine and they don't understand what they do here. It might be true, but from the military pilots except military pilot, they understood everything because the military pilot preparing um, not five minutes he prepared maybe one day or few hours to task and he when he said he only work on the coordinate and he don't know what in the this coordinate he will shoot this rocket he's lying because every time he can open the Google Earth and saw this coordinated. They motivated only three things. This is money motivation. This is respect or like a medal motivation. And they count all the missiles what they shoot on the Ukraine. They can shoot the mall, the supermarket, it doesn't care. They, they like it what they do. This is very different between um, Russian pilots, they know accurate what they do every time. Except the fighters or bombers, they know which village near this, uh, like, a, and uh, for example, the Tupolev aircraft, they shoot down the rocket which flew 2000 kilometers and shoot the mole, for example. 
with thousand people and uh, this is uh, they all should sit on the jail that's it this is what about the uh, russian pilots thank you so much